lamentable performance, a lazy performance, lethargic performance, Brownie. It's something yeah. that David Teague needs to address or he'll be gone like all coaches uh, that come to the end of the tether. There's about 100 piece of vision we've left on the cutting room floor. We could have gone through it for the next half an hour and show. Well, you don't announce a review and change minor things. If they lose to Adelaide, look, I think he's in trouble regardless. Uh, and there's a lack of trust amongst the players. A lack, I think they're confused or they just don't want to do what the coach mm. wants them to do. They've only beaten Essendon, uh, which isn't a bad win in hindsight, but uh, now, and obviously Hawthorne. But everyone else against quality sides, they lose. These young players that are the core, that are the real honest workers within that football club, they're the ones that they have to drive it. Otherwise, guess what? they're not going to be a good football side. Mind you, uh, aside from, say, Collingwood supporters, Carlton supporters have had a gutful, haven't mm -hmm. they? And, and when Carlton supporters are in full voice demanding change, invariably that happens. Our agenda is dominated by Carlton. The Blues made their decision today to part company with their coach. So five days after the season ended, the other shoe dropped for David Teague this morning. Yeah, so, look, I think they'd be hurting at the moment, the, the senior players, whether or not they were in support of Teague or, or not. It's still, it's, it's a big thing to happen at your football club. club embarked on a rigorous review. It was going to ruthlessly examine the structure and the personnel and the internal workings and then reshape Carlton for the future, the new Carlton. And the only leader to have been identified for the ultimate consequence is David Teague. This looks to me like the same old Carlton way of sacking the coach when it was dressed up as something else. But Britain, Pagan, Ratton, Malthouse, Bolton, now Teague. In 20 years. When you heard the president describe David Teague as a terrific Carlton person, yep. I'm not sure you treat terrific Carlton people like that, but in the names yeah. you've read out, th this is how it's always been. Mm. What, what, is, what is the circuit breaker? Um, well, I just think that the, the, the build of the culture. I mean, I'm, I'm big on culture. I think culture is the most important thing you can have in your, in your club. Uh, when you lose it, you know how, how important it is. Uh, and I think Carlton's lost it. You, you've got to start with the players. and They've got to actually dominate what they do in this football club. And once you start to build a bond like that amongst your players, you know what? You're going to go somewhere. They need to get their ducks in a row and get themselves right. It's, it's a, new, a new era, a new beginning. It gives someone a chance to actually grab a list. And if you look at this, you've got two bookends. You've got Weedering and McKay that are all Australian quality. You've got a gun midfielder in Walsh. You've got Cripps, who's a gun midfielder. Uh, Kerner, who we haven't seen, who we think could be absolutely anything. Of course, they got Saad last year, who's been phenomenal off halfback. The, the nucleus of the team is there. There is, there is a good smattering of players there. So this can turn around, I reckon, pretty quickly. It can, but you've got to under-promise and over-deliver. Not the other way, because that's what's happened. We have uh, unanimously selected Michael, and why why have we done that? We've we've done that because we believe right at this period of time, Michael is the best leader and the best coach to get what we think is sort of untapped potential within our within our playing group. And when we look at our list, we think. Our list is really poised for great things when married up with those attributes and those skill sets which Vossi uh, has, in, has in spades. Collective mindset, right? There is not going to be an individual that will be the difference for us. It will be all of us that makes the shift together. Just be uncomfortable. Now, when a coach stands up here and says be uncomfortable, often you refer straight away, you go two players, we're going to train 10K extra, um, we're going to make our sessions, we're going to make this pre-season bigger and stronger. That's not what I'm talking about. Uncomfortability is just willing to be able to hand yourself over, have the courage to be uncomfortable. If you're not clear on something, ask the question. But what I'm going to ask you to do is embrace uncomfortability. Oh, Jason, I just want to get better. They just had a real hunger to want to get better and every single thing that we're throwing at these guys, they've really taken on and we've asked certain things of them and they've really bought into it. And, um, you know, that will hopefully give us a chance and, you know, obviously we invest a bit of time around our contest method and we've invested a lot of time around our defensive method and, 
you know, playing against a pretty good team tonight that'll uh, that'll test both. What do the Carlton fans expect to see when, when we watch the Blues play tonight? What will make you proud of the way the boys have gone about it? What's going to be the Carlton DNA in 2022? Heat on the ball. And, you know, if anything, it always starts. And you'll hear every single coach talk about that. But um, it has to be the starting point. If you're any chance of getting your system and method going, then it starts with putting heat on the ball. And um, we want to make sure that we get that. And, and some of the things we've seen already in the St Kilda game and a little bit more in the Melbourne game suggest that we've been able to bring that. The skipper looked in sensational form over the pre-season, Fossey, after a big summer in, on the training track, in the gym. How confident are you that he can get back to that kind of form we saw two years ago when he was in All-Australian MVP kind of form? He's in terrific condition. He's carrying nothing coming into the season. You know, where we can, the addition of Jarrah and Hewitt into the team really sort of balances out that midfield. And, and then we try and bring a system that brings our strengths to the table. So hopefully if they all complement one another, we get the very best of Patrick Cripps. Bossy, we are so excited to see you in action in the coaches' box tonight. Best of luck for tonight and the rest of 2022. Carlton, can they do it finally against Richmond in a round one clash? Let's take a look at the recent history. They last won, Ross, in round one in 2012. And then when they lose these games, they've been zero and two to start seasons since 2013. You know, a lot of people feel like you can tell a lot by how a team starts in round one and what the season's going to look like. I think for our group, it's really important, really important to make a statement early, round one statement to show that we are back. And I think for a lot of people, probably myself included, but I won't really believe that we've changed until we beat Richmond in round one on Thursday night. And I think the belief of everyone uh, turns a new page. Underway. But he's got a big job on the reigning Coleman medalist, Mackay, who goes in the decoding direction. He launches. What a grab. We got a great group of guys that really stuck together, and um, yeah, tonight was a it was a I suppose a big um, a big game for us as a club. Um, I've never beaten Richmond to do it in a way, especially in that last quarter to get the fans behind us. It's as loud as I've I've had uh, crowd sort of cheer, and just so proud of the boys and, and the whole club. Richmond had control of the game a couple of times, and I think most people probably expected Richmond to get on top and then just get the job done and Carlton probably default. Yeah, well, they so didn't. It's, it's a different mindset under Michael Voss. Yeah, and, and their change is with the ball. But the biggest change I think everyone wanted to see that follows Carlton is the change defensively. And, and the mindset, yeah. that was there for us all to see as well. And, and personnel plays a big part in that as well, guys. He's given so much to the club and what he's been through puts everything in perspective, I think. Um, he's just a strong-minded bastard. If you're not at the club, you don't quite know the journey that he's gone through, but they've seen it firsthand. It's yeah. hard not to get emotional tonight when you see the crowd react the way they yeah. did, particularly after the goal. The support from the Carlton people was, was evident tonight. It's not just a sport, it's, it's a family, it's a community, and you know we've been just waiting for it to happen. Now, has it happened? I don't know. We've got a whole season ahead of us. It's round one. What the win does, yes, it's one game, yes, it's four points, but 
you gotta get the early win to build the confidence. And that is something that you can build off. You know, we've been talking about it for years. Just win round one, we, the fans, will carry the momentum as well. They need to come out and do it again next week. Big game oh, Thursday night oh, against geez. Bulldogs. Huge. You've turned too quickly the next week. Competition's better when the Blues are up yeah. and running. Yeah. Can't be a flash in the pan for one week. Yeah, one, one great win. One swallow doesn't make it summer king. Again, no disrespect to probably our previous midfields in the last six years, but, but this crew that we've got now is um, a, a serious midfield. Uh, everyone's just doing their role, everyone's getting a lick of the ice cream. When it's their moment, they go, um, and when it's not, they protect each other, and um, Cripp is leading the way with that. He's led the way from the very start. Uh, even post the internal review, the boys all got together. We talked about standards going into the off-season. He's driven it from the word go. So um, I can't talk highly enough for Cripper, what he's been able to do. Uh, and Walsh and I are trying to support him as much as possible. And uh, he's certainly getting the reward out on the field now, which is awesome. Welcome to the MCG for this round three clash between two surprisingly undefeated sides so far in 2022, Hawthorne and Carlton. The Blues welcome back coach Michael Voss after a COVID break, while the Hawks are looking to keep up their form after a victory over Port Adelaide. Let's head to the opening bounce. Kerno and Silvani in the back, and Kerno, well, what a start in the front 50 for Carlton. To half forward, Kerno is there again. Ranging out 60 from goal, sends to Silvani this time. Oh, Silvani! Shades of his old man. Sicily, Reeves, will have a play at it. Oh, Jeff. oh he let him in and done. That was all the invitation he needed. Sweeps the hand pass. They've got through the first line of defence. And Ward is going to be hunted down by Harry. Hawthorne fans find full voice. Just hesitated a fraction on the kick. There wasn't a lot ahead, but somehow it got Wingard through the wall. Now. now Bruce and Wingard will have the delightful task of kicking their third in a row. Knew it. Mitchell. Mitchell! That's four in a row for the Hawks. Jack with the long kick. Gunston had to wait, but Wiedering's out of the picture. The goal beckons. The lead beckons. The Hawks are in front. Even numbers ahead of the ball, so they're a chance. Owies, Fisher, oh. Silvani. Jack Silvani puts Calden in front. And the Blue Baggers rise again. What a task. Hawthorne have precisely 60 seconds. Can they be gone from the back pocket? Take it the length of the MCG. 55 seconds, flash point in the middle of the G. Which way will it go? O'Meara, they're going to get the shot. No, they won't. Oh, Jacob Wiedering has repelled and repelled all day. The Blues are back, baby. Were you watching them yesterday thinking... They are very close to being the finished product as far as a premiership contender. It's a good question, and I've been really hard on Carlton, but I, but I did walk away thinking this is this is a top four calibre side. And the only other thing is, can the group stay healthy? So I noticed yesterday, Lordo, when McGovern and Saad weren't there, they lost their dare a bit, particularly in the second half. So if Mikhail Kerno goes down, can't win it, and if Wiedering goes down, can't win it. But should they stay sound like Melbourne did 
last year, they're, they're going to be around the mark, so they're not missing too much. That's a concern there. Boyd's having some instruction from the fitness staff to warm up. Cripps is off the ground at the moment, so we're not sure what's going on there, but he's been off for a couple of minutes. Tough going for the forwards for the time being as we see Cripps here. This is the quarter time. To make matters worse, not just on the scoreboard for the Blues, but their captain, courageous Patrick Cripps, injured his left hamstring with six minutes left on the clock in the first quarter. Yeah, it'll be interesting the, the assessment post this as well, because it's very high. We just wait and see now on the on the assessment of it and how how bad it is for the uh, for the Blues champ. Always love the superstars playing, so so disappointing, particularly when they're ab playing their very best footy. They're going to celebrate their first win at home in nearly a year and inflict the first loss on the Blues under Michael Voss. It's going to be a long flight home for Carlton players tonight. I think it's safe to say we got exactly what we deserved um, and got beaten up and just soundly beaten across the four quarters by a Suns team who were there all game, wanted it, were hungry and, you know, full credit to them. Further forward, Mackay, he dribbled it under the arm of Aaliyah. Martin steals it back, rolls it to Mackay, looks up, he's got Fisher, tucked into the pocket. Oh. Unbelievable! Stolen back, Durden, he bends it! And he goes it! Now he's got a huge skill set on the Rosie. But always on show, all game, but it's on show there! Probably just beyond go for it. Burt. Oh, he bursts it. Hang on, hang on. He bursts it through. Five in a row. Centering kick. Will that work? How Pepper might make it work. And he blasts it. And he blasts it straight. Wow. Humes goes forward. Charlie Gunno. Over the back. Stands under it, goes up, butters, one minute left, target hit, Avon, who could kick a long ball from 50 points down. Blast it, Goldwood, they need a mark, Giorgiani's at the back, up behind. Launches long, Kai marks, it's over. Colossal. They're not just back, the Blues, they're back to stay. Place. It's that's how you do it. That's smashing your knee, and that that was why they brought the centre circle in because yep. every ruckman in the game effectively ducked in one of those injuries because yeah. used to smash knees. Uh, well, let's hope it's uh, not too bad. A hard athlete to match. A lot of debate going on on the bench, isn't there? There's been a lot of discussion with Pettinet and the medical staff. That's a bit of a concern too. Harry Mackay might get down to Ryan Daniels. What do you think's happening down there, Ryan? Yeah, as you can see, guys are taking a good close look at that right knee there. Lob back on the ground. Here's a chance for Akers. He's fired at a goal and he's produced an absolute gem. The players, we hope, we are seen for the best part of a decade. Here's Swikowski just to put a little bit of icing on the cake. A couple for Sam. we are finished with the ball in his hands. So the Dockers get it done. They down the Blues. And Carlton hasn't escaped the dreaded Rackman injury either with Mark Pitnett sidelined for up to three months. It's a brutal blow for the Blues with Jack Silvani no certainty to return to face the Kangaroos. I think we're confident in the plans that we've got a bit. It just comes down to execution at times. Harry Mackay will need to pass a fitness test to take on North Melbourne. Our ability to read the game and, and realise what it needs at times is something that we're working on. Squeezing the can, they're all out. Carroll! Oh, what a start! 
the best efforts. And follow up though. And another goal to the Blues on the run. And take your pick out of the two gun forwards. Is it Charlie or Harry? Mackay. Kennedy in the searching lead. Take the turn. I think his eight-week stretch is as good as captaincy as I've seen. Kerno swings it in low. Oh, 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 the Motlop tradition. All of them have been handy around goals. He's no exception. Jesse Motlop. Work way from O'Brien to present Ford at the top of the 50. He likes the look of it from there. He lights up long. It needs to be more. It's coming. It's there. Lucky O'Brien. Good leverage on the 40. Hasn't quite got the journey. Ball fire. To Silvani. Who's got the goal face at his mercy. He gets around. It's going to be the Blues who make it four in a row and they set up a great clash with the Pies next week. Carlton are the real deal. <laughs> the Blues are here. The Blues are here. They've arrived. They're here. The turning point has come and we're eight and two after the Blues. Carlton fucking football club beat the Swans 15 goals 12 102 to 13 goals 987 no matter what happens from here you know we're gonna lose but I have no longer got that sinking feeling in the gut that I'm gonna watch them and they're gonna embarrass the club and uh, I'm just so excited for what's to come because I feel like this is the beginning of it hopefully this just continues on for years to come and but hopefully in the second half of the season you know we get Harry back we get quite a few of our best players back and you know I trust the system so even when those players are not there I trust that whoever's in the team is going to perform a role and and get the job done because they have been getting the job done and you know can you imagine us in finals like it's just 
It's everything we've wanted. They're just flying. I mean, it was, it was a, a terrific performance. Now, they were able to absorb 37 to 18 inside 50s in the second half. You'd have to think that the Blues are absolutely made of the right stuff with the way they've gone about it. And, and who knows how far they can go. They still have a lot of injuries. I had full confidence in our system to, to do the job. We, we've done it, uh, I guess, early on in the season against Hawthorne and Port Adelaide. They came back. We got the win. Um, and I guess last year that's the sort of stuff that w would happen, we'd lose those sort of games. Guys that go out, guys that come in are doing their jobs um, and again it's just, it's an awesome atmosphere at the moment. We're, we're confident but we're humble about it, we, we've been doing it week in week out. For me the lid is still on uh, for this because of their second half. Carlton that's helter skelter all the time and then they, it's hard to sustain so that's probably the area they've just got to adjust a little bit. Eighty thousand people will cram into the MCG on Sunday afternoon. It's Carlton and Collingwood. Ned, you touched on that amazing record. Phenomenal, isn't it? 128 wins apiece, four draws. Ross, what a great history it's been between these two clubs. Well, it's been a long time in the making. A, a game like this, Carlton and Collingwood. Collingwood been up for a while, but Carlton resurgence. The lid's off. Yes, a very good afternoon and welcome to the MCG, the most matched sides in the history of football. Carlton and Collingwood, you talk about blockbusters, does not get any bigger than this. I feel like this is the biggest game in years in terms of home, home and away football, and we're going to experience it today. Carlton have come from nowhere this year, looking for their fifth consecutive win. They want to participate in finals. Five and five Collingwood, eight and two Carlton, we are underway. Hewitt getting onto him, kept it alive now, gripped by Taylor Adams, who are posting like a bulldog, and that's all it needs to get a bit of air into this game. James going at it to Coney, to Chera Carlton's clearance game against Collingwood's pressure game. Here's Dirt, the kicks all wide open, forward 50. Dacos should be first to get back there. Can he get there in time? He can't! Dirt gets Carlton second! Top, well played to Goey, came bursting through for the Pies. Near the collarbone shoulder, somewhere in that region. The signs aren't good from the bench guys from Jacob Wiedering, so he hasn't reappeared. Jack Carroll has now taken the, the warm-up top off, but I don't reckon the news is great about Jacob Wiedering. We've had confirmation from Carlton, an AC joint for Jacob Wiedering. You saw when he came from the ground in pain immediately, the doctors took him down the race, checked him out, gave an assessment and pretty quickly realised he couldn't keep playing. So Carroll into the game. Jacob Wiedering with an AC joint injury. Yeah, he got a uh, like a glancing blow to the back of his shoulder, so it's an AC joint. So uh, we'll have a let look at at tomorrow. But um, yeah, I think he's going to miss some footy. Any indication on the severity for now? Yeah, we'll have we'll have a look at tomorrow. But yeah, he's, he's pretty sore, and uh, yeah, there's a fair bit to it. So uh, not sure how long at this point. But yeah, I think he'll miss a little bit of footy. Couldn't quite glove it, got it on the bounce. Shot the handball off to the left foot of Fisher. He can go from there, couldn't quite work it. Cripps to Walsh, Walsh around the corner. They're in desperate need of a goal and they've got it. They are back within a goal. Go towards Majacek. And Brody Majacek can pop it over the top to Mason Cox. Outstanding pressure from Collingwood. To give Collingwood an 11 point lead. This is the way Curlo likes it. From 53 metres. That'll come back. That'll come back. That has come back. They're back to within 11. Steps one, steps two. Handball through traffic. Walsh can get it and go. Delivers inside 50. Two on one deep. Silvani. Over the top. Curlo open goal. Final minute. Five point game. It spills Maynard. Smothered off his boot. To Silvani misses. Clock stops at five seconds. Coach is nervous. Five seconds to get it on the boot. Walsh has got it. Twigging around. See the temper was a little high. Collingwood win by four.
We'll start with Carlton, and it's the news that Blues fans feared star defender Jacob Wietering to go under the knife after that serious shoulder injury. Braden Ingram has been covering the story for us. Braden, tell us, how long will he miss? Well, Tony, it'll be at least six weeks, which means Jacob Wietering won't be sighted again at the earliest until round 18. Now, this follows scans and a consultation with a surgeon a little bit earlier today. It was determined that the best and quickest cause of action will be for him to undergo surgery, which will happen later in the week, and then he'll begin his rehab. Now, really, adds to the Blues injury chaos, particularly in defence with frontliners Zach Williams, Mitch McGovern, joined by Wiedering in now taking long breaks. Oscar McDonald's season is already over and then of course big man Harry Mackay and Mark Pitnett are on the sidelines for an extended period too, so some challenging weeks ahead after the bye for Michael Voss. The high ball, Stringer's coming here, couldn't quite get a run and got the spoil though, little knockdown, out the back door to Hobbs, run down, tackled by Saad. Perfection. Broken up by Fisher. Blues get another one. Carlton have got up and won by 26 points. Fisher, Silvani, can Carlton get something going? Here's a chance for two in a minute. Cottrell, O'Brien, can he pull the trigger? 51 out, low, flat, straight. Kennedy wants to get it and go, runs away from McIntosh, who's stuck to the task. Kick to the pocket, Kerno with a couple to beat. Over the back, open goal. Boyd now sets up to Koning, out the back a chance for Martin. Got to be quick, Cochin, tackle, comes unstuck, into the third deck of the G. He gives it his all, hooks it towards the pocket. It'll drop short, front and centre, Nunes. Tight angle, amazing goal! Tigers are claiming it's touched. Review complete. Looking at this angle, we can see the ball is touched by the Richmond defender. Decision on the scoreboard. They say it's a game of inches. It may be less than that. Here's Rioli. Morris on the ground. He goes inside. Ordinary sort of a kick in the end. Edwards handles it well. How big a swing is that? To rise. Richmond have won six of their last seven to be squarely in the finals picture. Is the sleeping triple premiership giant starting to awaken? Keep fighting right to the end, we never give in. Um, but it really at the start of the game, um, we couldn't quite execute the way we wanted to. Newton's goal would have put you in three or four points, it might have been three. There's obviously the goal review which was Overruled. Uh, it looked like it was touched, but what's your opinion on that? Was it decisive enough to, to, to overrule? Um, we'd want to make the sure we're absolutely 100% sure before overturning something like that myself. But um, if it was touched, then um, then we move on. You know, we, we've been able to hold that, that end where we've had some of those injuries. Um, you know, we'd like it to be different, but we don't have it different. So the players are not whinging about it. We're not we're not um, referencing it. Um, we've really embraced, um, you know, trying to build team spirit within this group, play a really selfless brand of football, and that requires stepping up sometimes. Um, so that's what we're going to ask the players to do, is step up. I can tell you our style doesn't include conceding 76 inside 50s to 51, so you could probably start there. And it doesn't include getting out toughed around the ball. We've got, we've got a group of players, we've got to get back to work. Um, clearly we've got some things to work on. Um, we've got some things to assess. Um, we'll review it really, really hard. Um, and we'll go after the next one, um, and that's what we'll that's what we'll do, like we have every single week. I'm really worrying for Carlton this week. I think Fremantle will get hold of them. The Tors, I think they'll get their knife and fork out, fork out and they'll have a big feed. He's losing a lot of soldiers. The whole time we've talked about kind of the next man up um, mentality. And no matter if you're playing VFL and get elevated or you're, you know, a mainstay in the 22, you're expected to get your role done. And, um, yeah, we'll back our guys in. And um, as I said, it's, a, it's an 18 man or 22 man system. And um, everyone's got a role to play in that, not just the back six. Coming your way, let's get things underway. Second on the ladder, the Dockers taking on the Blues, sitting fifth currently. Underrides the tackle. Out to Hughes. Five. Silvani takes him on the Astro turf. Congratulations to Jack playing his 200th game. Make it four in a row for the Blues. Jack Nunes does just that. He's thought about a second. Went to Nunes. Steps one way. Didn't want the shot. Pierced it to Kerno. Plays on immediately. Hooks it around the body. Cue the crowd. The dasher. Blue down. High plays for Back towards Cottrell. 
Drives it home. It's Walsh again, sending it deep forward. Silvani. Curdo. Bang! Massive goal. Charlie loves it. Great size hand. The kick there coming back in a few weeks. Oh, just got rid of it. No, he didn't. No, he did not. Siren. Blues led by that man. Four goals. Get the job done over the Dockers by 31 points. Question's got to be asked now. For so long this year, we thought Carlton are a very good side, but now do we start to talk about them in premiership material? Do you believe they can win it in 2022? Well, if they get their defenders back, I think they can, because their plan yesterday was to win as much contested footy as they can and not allow Fremantle in there. And we saw in the first quarter with limited entries, they kicked three goals and you thought, that's going to be what's going to happen today. But then Carlton's pressure was just outstanding, so the ball lived in their half of the ground. If they played that way, that, that's, that's September football, that's grand final winning football. If they can handle that when it comes to playing the big game and apply that pressure the whole game, I think they're right in it. That's, that, that for me is the point there. I think a lot of us here understand an apprenticeship in football, playing finals, going deep into finals, experiencing losses. We all know it's different and there's an element of, of footy that you need to play in finals and they just haven't experienced that. So I think that's the only thing holding them back. And I think it was a, a full credit to the, the entire team. Just everyone really got involved in that in, in different ways. And they said flag mantle, we said no. I know we're coming up against probably better opposition in this patch than what we have happy Carlton supporter. I didn't really respect their pressure as much as what we should have. Um, and then it was really down to efficiency. I'd, um, you know, I'd like to create another story, but that was that was it. Uh, and then uh, clearly when we got our opportunities, um, we weren't able to convert it. So, um, yeah, there's not, there's not too many games where you get 29, 30 shots on goal and you're going at 57% scores per entry and you lose the game. What I tend to look at a fair bit is around um, our, our process, more so than, than the outcome. Um, so if you sort of strip back tonight's result and you just, again, cast your eyes over the numbers, um, you'd say that for a large portion of the game, we are able to get the game the way that we wanted it, but it comes down to efficiency. You know, it's fine to, to have all the method in the world and all the structure in the world and the right mindset, but you know, in the end, you've got to finish your work. And so we just didn't reward ourselves tonight. And everyone's touched on it, but we, we chase us and, and the level that we want to play, and we, we've done that for the most part of this year. So if we can keep doing that, we'll be, we'll be okay. Oh, ugly kick off the instep. It might work okay for Fisher. Playing the line perfectly. And then up towards Kurnow who attacks it. Roving front and centre is Durden. He's away. And the Blues with a slice, slice of luck on the boundary. Bangs it back. Good spot. Flies go up. Off hands. Bakai. The crummer. Right on the final siren. To add the exclamation mark. To a big win for Carlton. The Blues beat West Coast for the first time in eight years. Pretty happy to see the boys get a win. All the hard work we've been banking in every week. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it was fucking, it was really good. Sorry. Oh, there we go. And the pass of his teammate to Stengel. He's going to dribble it home. Tyson Stengel got it. Might just pull the tree and couldn't quite. Cripps, the skipper, onto the left. Going to score to Coney, there's a piece of it. And he slipped the handball out. Centerfield gets all the angles right. That's fair to say he's a happy man. Ward waited for it to his detriment. Against Walsh. And he's Ooh. rolled an ankle. Yeah. He's had ankle problems over the last 12 months. And the Sinders Moses operation at the start of the year came back amazingly quickly. But yeah, he's in trouble that's, here. That's bad, bad, bad news. They're going to stop play for him here, which is interesting. For the Giants, and did he collect Wiedering on the way through?
Toby Green. Yeah, mate, just copped a cork. Left thigh. You can see the knee of Toby Green go into it. Well, loosen that thigh up. Walsh bends it. Goal square. Brown, he's put it to grass. Honey! Fed on that. Got the kick away. Start! Oh. Takes a ripper! <laughs> Durden about to pounce. Handball options are plenty. Weaves his way through a couple. Brilliant. Blues fans are stuck around to sing the song. It's across the face. Blues, with a much needed victory, can almost taste finals now. Yeah, I am mindful of the challenge that the Crows will give us, but I'm just as confident in what we are able to do because of what we've shown all season long and, and what this patch of the season means for the group. You know, it's getting tough, it's a grind, the bodies must be aching. Listen, all signs point towards a really exciting time for us as supporters to go to the footy and know that we're playing in the pointy end of the season to play against the best teams in the competition, the top four teams in the competition. We've got two more games remaining, or maybe three if you count. The Pies is a top four side now, and obviously just a must win game. They're all must win from here on in. The, the pressure starts to lift now, and this is the challenge for the group, you know, because you know with that pressure comes expectation, and we need to be able to manage and handle and, and focus with all the expectation and the external. Go there, get the job done, and move on. You know, we're gonna find out a lot about this group and, and what they're capable of over the, over the next, you know, three to four weeks. Maybe one more win. Four games left, and they're there. Fed it back, Miller, awesome display. Made the effort to get there, caused some chaos, keep it in the area, Schomburg, big hit with Charlie McHenry. Himmelberg, Schomburg, open goal square, Keys, play of the night. See if he goes downstairs to get that stitched or not. And he bananas that from there. Miller, 50 from gold, Keys, Fogarty, brushes them aside, takes on Jarrah, takes the lot of them on. Oh, don't you want to be him? How good was that? There's a kick, rolls into a good spot. Keys, the brush off for the knockout blow. Himmelberg spins it, got it. Savour at Adelaide fans. Classic win at home against the odds. For the Crows. The mouth guards will be out of training this week as Carlton battles to stay in the eight. The side's intensity levels have come under fire after blowing a chance to seal a top eight spot. The shock loss to Adelaide featuring 23 broken tackles, a season high. The coach who's been one of the toughest players to ever play the game, they have relied on their toughness all year to get them in the position that they are in. And then they go to Adelaide against the youngest team in the competition and they serve up more missed tackles than I think I've ever seen in a game of football. So it, it is a physically um, really disappointing performance from a Carlton side who have we have admired their toughness all year. That is amazing vision. Once you match Carlton at the contest and they've been found out a couple of times there and you shut down their halfbacks in Doherty and Sard like Adelaide did, um, what other options does you have when you play really hard-nosed defenders on Mackay and Kerno like Butts and Murray did, then what's the tactical advantage he's going to gain? So that's the next test of his coaching. I guess coming out on a Monday after a loss is, is still very disappointing and we'll certainly learn from what happened on the weekend, but at the same time, we're in a really, really good position, really strong position. If the Blues can't tame the Lions, they'll need to beat either Melbourne or Collingwood to feature in September. If we are going to be testing ourselves later on in the year, these are the teams we're going to be playing against. So. Um, we'd rather find out now. Well, they'll go in underdogs in all of them. I think the last game of the season's probably their best chance, and that's against Collingwood, but you don't want to be leaving it till that late. Yeah, my, my initial thought last night was it would be bitterly disappointing to mm. miss the finals, yeah. but they, they, that can't be in their thinking at the moment. No, no. Straighten up, yeah. You know, win one out of three, they should be obviously setting themselves to win three out of three and making a run at hosting an elimination final. Welcome back. Michael Voss says Patrick Cripp should be cleared for a bruising bump that's left Carlton captain facing match review scrutiny. 
As Carlton's finals hopes teeter on the brink, Patrick Cripps faces a nervous sway. I don't think it was a bump. I, I don't think he chose to bump. We can't have that in our sport anymore. Calamar Chi was subbed out with concussion, landing the Brownlow fancy in hot water. If the incident is deemed high impact, Cripps will face a two-week ban. If graded severe, he'll be sent directly to the tribunal. I thought it was a good contest. Uh, yeah, my initial thought was it was just a good footy hit and um, both players had ice of the ball. And... My flinch reaction, Jared, was you're gone, Patrick Cripps. You are gone. I don't think in this state that we're in, in this game that we've got, that, that, that if that goes unpunished, then we're kidding ourselves. The argument was for Willie Rowley that he couldn't reasonably expect to, you know, reasonably expect contact in that situation and obviously had to brace. Well, so did Patrick Cripps. Vossi's attitude is that this is a competitive physical game and we need to be competitive physical players. You need to change the flow of the contest and you do that with you can do it with an act of brilliance and skill, but the other, the, the main way is to go harder and lower often than your opponent and win a hard ball. I reckon Paddy Cripps's actions were around leadership and trying to drive his his group. So yes, you've got to fly the flag, and yes, you've got to do all that stuff, and it's easy sitting here in hindsight a day after it, but uh, Gia puts him in a parlous position. I look at his eyes. His eyes at the moment, as he goes to jump up, his eyes are on the ball, and he only late looked down and, and braced when it was about to have collision. What we're asking players to do is not commit to winning that ball then. It's just a footy contest with an unfortunate outcome. By asking players not to commit to that ball, we're going to change what footy looks like. that Carlton knew was coming but still would have lived in fear of for most of the day. A two-match suspension for the captain, Patrick Cripps. It rules him out of these two games that will determine their finals participation unless, unless they go to the tribunal tomorrow night and argue successfully to beat it. I think Patrick Cripps is a very fair footballer. I think he plays in a manner that people like. He will be giving his testimony tomorrow night and I think he'll say the ball was in dispute. I went for it, I jumped at it and right at the last second I realised I wasn't going to come there so I braced. Now is that a suspension? It's a really interesting case because the ramifications... I can't believe it's come up again mate. So what do you think will happen? I think he'll be found guilty. I thought that, but I've now changed my mind. Yep. I think he'll be found not guilty. So this will be right in the margins, and the consequences are enormous, because this is a fixture, Carlton and Melbourne, that two months ago we were salivating over. It's lost some of its appeal. The anticipation has been, in a way, replaced by trepidation, because the midfield matchups aren't what they were going to be. And if Cripps is not there, it makes Carlton's task all the more immense. And so they walk in, you press play on the Willy Rioli tape and you'll walk out five minutes later. That's how it should go. Uh, it absolutely should. Carlton is currently in a real fight to save Patrick Cripps' season, appealing the AFL Tribunal's two-match ban for his high bump. Carlton certainly have nothing to lose in a pinning a strong case, a case which surrounds uh, two main points. One, the conduct of the Tribunal itself, in their words, believing that Patrick Cripps was denied proper justice. And the other uh, key ruling in the phrase, in the bumping of an opponent, in the decision-making, the Tribunal found that Patrick Cripps should have contested it in a safe way to minimise the risk. But Carlton's legal team argued that given that first definition, there's no way the jury could have come to the decision that it was a reportable offence. For the last 45 minutes, Carlton's legal team have been making their arguments. It will then be up to the AFL to plead its case before the appeals board goes away and deliberates on the decision. It's a very technical hearing and it could take at least an hour before... Stop, stop, stop. Terry, go on Twitter, mate. Appeal has succeeded. Let's He's go. Free to play. What? No. Hang on, hang on. no. Stop He's it. He's free to play. No. What's taking no. the piss? Are you taking the piss or? No, no. He's free to play. He's free to play. Get the fuck out, yeah. mate. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, my God. Yalla creeps. He's a. Oh That's sick, man. Wow. Four hours and 40 minutes. It was wow. all worth it, baby. Oh. Wow. Got off.
Sorry, that's my bad. <laughs> we run the fucking league, ladies and gentlemen. Bash is gonna be out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, can I just say, it was fucking worth every second being on this fucking stream. Fucking oh. Fucking oh. Yeah. Thank you. No. Heck yeah. How good. Oh, my cheeks are sore. Fuck, good job, Oh everyone. my god, we're beating Melbourne, we're beating Collingwood. Um, we're winning wow. the grand final, flag is 2022 on <laughs> <laughs> Tez, you've got to. You've, the brown mode. Terry, you have to get that snippet. Get the snippet of where we all just went nuts. I will. I will. I will. Rivers turned around in the tackle. Somehow found Bayshaw. Couldn't get the kick. Now Mackay needs to do what he couldn't earlier. To Oliver in the end. Silvani to Fisher. Fisher contemplates onto the right boot. Might have kicked a goal. Hands. Nervous moment. They've got some composure. Really done. Oh, he's ricochets back to Curdo. The centre inch kick was on. Dirt fell over. He's agile enough to kick it back to back goals. Go. Saad and Fritch. Ball to be won. Pick it wins it. Saad. Terrific desperation. Our biggest launch. Little handball. Always towards Dirt. Dirt stood up. left just speechless turn the focus right to next sunday and it's it's a it's a fucking illumination final next week lo and behold we heard vossi say the word final next week so it's out there not that it matters not that it changes anything because the reality is we do need to get on top of the way we play our best footy I mean, the, the, the way you describe it there and the scenes that we saw, you know, the players sitting on the ground, I mean, that's the sort of stuff you see losing teams yeah. in the grand final, isn't it? Yeah. That, this is as bad as a home and away loss gets, you know, that's as bad as it gets. You know, I've lost the prelim by a point, but this is as close to what you get uh, with a home and away loss. But Bossy, he was, he just, he stands on the bench uh, with the players, obviously coaches from down there. He just started charging off on his own, disconsolate, hands in his pockets. He was going to head straight down to the rooms. Just as he got close, he thought, I already triggered, I can't just go off and leave my players there. He turned back around, walked 60 metres back, he tapped every player on the bump. He and Cripper walked down arm in arm, so I reckon he's got a thought to himself, I, I have to be here with my players, we've got one more week to try and salvage and turn this around, so I reckon it just ticked off in his brain as he's charging off that ground. Uh, you know, we've got uh, 118 minutes um, of football that, you know, there's plenty to celebrate. Uh, and then there's two minutes of football that, um, you know, leave you um, feeling somewhat disappointed. Um, so we have to lean more into uh, the 118 minutes and some of the actions that we saw through that period of time. But, you know, clearly we've had to go to work on how we finish out those games. And if it presents itself again, um, that we're all on the same page and we can get that job done if we need it. Mate, next Sunday at the MCG, is gonna, it's going to be, it's everything we want it to be. That's what it is. It's, yeah, it's like I said, it's poetic, but it has to be next week.
lots of learning, obviously incredibly frustrating and disappointed. You, oh, I guess most people would have seen the reaction. It was a, it was a heart stopper and, and the boys were pretty flat afterwards. As I said, we've got uh, very high motivation to, to go out against Collingwood this week and get a win. It's an awesome opportunity to be involved in. Um, and what better team to come up against than Collingwood, the old rival. You can see it as pressure and uh, obviously it's, you'll get nervous and those sorts of things or you can, it's a privilege to go out there and play. And yeah, I guess you, your season's full of, full of adversity and it's how you sort of handle it and cope with it and um, it'll really tell our story come, come Sunday. There's, there's plenty to play for. Um, uh, the whole AFL world will be watching and um, hopefully the Blues come out on top. You know, clearly we've had to go to work on how we finish out those games and if it presents itself again, um, that we're all on the same page and we can get that job done if we need it. It's a, it's a great rivalry. We embrace the rivalry as we did the last time we played against them. We don't step away from that. If anything, we lean into it. It'll be the biggest home and away game ever on Sunday. I'd like, never be more interested. Yeah, but I'm saying if they don't win, they don't deserve to play fast. So they've had four opportunities to seal a final yep. spot. And this will be the fourth. And if they don't do it, they so, don't deserve so to play fast. Umpires today, Hayden Devine, Simon Meredith and Craig Fleer. Here we go. And it's on as well. Penalty and Owies and O'Brien. All in a march to Martin Dekoe. And a little bit of friction. Our and eyes are closed where we start this low. Look at the blues coming in. They are coming in numbers. Talk about fundamentals, Nate. Hold Hear my chest, how we be for you. Right foot for your hands. Story's collapsed. The worst of fates for Carlton. The greatest of deeds for Collingwood. And as Blues fans leave the grounds, it's a night straight season without finals.
without finals. That, that was a butchering of the highest right. order. Everything that will break your heart as a football supporter forever yep. is what Carlton just did then. That, that just shows the gap. The gap in the leadership there versus the gap in the leadership at Collingwood on the field. That's and that's, that's the unlosable. I mean, that, let's be honest, they lost the unlosable today. By point. What does one possibly say after that? It's the most devastating way for our, our season to end. There's no doubt about that. If I could put into words to describe how we're all feeling and make you all feel better, I'd, I'd love to take away everyone's pain, if I could. Um, that is a real kick in the short and curlies, isn't it? We wanted them to learn from the 120 seconds they played last week. And, uh, yeah, they didn't, did they? 45 years, bro. The first time in 45 years that a team has been in the eight. I mean, for all rounds. Let that sink in. Just let that sink in. We put so much fucking effort in as a fan base. And, I mean, the fans give so fucking much to this club, man. So much to this club. And it's okay, you can say fucking you're proud of them and stuff. And that's fantastic, do you know what I mean? But well done's get you nowhere in life when the results aren't there. Like, at the end of the day, our club could be dog shit, our club could be great. But what makes a club really great is the people around it and all you fans, do you know what I mean? And they should have some belief. Um, hopefully we've given a bit of belief about what we're about and how we're going to be about going forward. It was such a good performance, but in the end, it's the four points that matter. And it was all in front of 88,000 at the MCG. Ooh. What a crowd, what an atmosphere. And there was no consolation at all to Michael Voss. There was a lot of uncertainty around the club at the end of last season. This time last year, I went back and had a look at the review of last year and the preview of this year, and it was uncertainty, complete and utter dysfunction. The fact that we're sitting here talking about feeling really bad because of how close we were to finals and to miss out is somewhat a better problem to have. That's sort of a positive from, from, from our point of view, how far we've been able to grow as a team and as a club and, and unite. No doubt we have to acknowledge how far that we've come. Um, you know, we've been able to progress so many things. So was it a wasted year or a worthwhile one for the Blues? Well, there's some positives to look at, isn't there, Lordo? And you've touched on that. Um, but we also walk away um, not getting what we really wanted. I hope it stings everyone. I hope it really stings. And I'm just hoping that the players, and we all do as a footy club, um, use it as a motivator. A key reflection for me after my first 12 months in this role is how significant the connection is between our football club and our supporters and how powerful that really is. No other crowd can generate the emotion, the passion and sheer energy like a Carlton home crowd. You give us an edge that no other football club has. I think hopefully for, for parts of this year we were able to give them a brand of footy that they were proud to watch. And... I think um, they can only get happier from here if we do that more consistently. I hope they're equally as excited as well. Um, so, you know, when a new coach comes in with a new team, it's, it is fresh and new and different. And, um, but I hope that excitement is born by what's ahead of us and, and the journey that's ahead of us and, and what we've got to look forward to. Like we put so much energy into the footy and the results, um, but on, a, on an actual experience, you know, it was a really enjoyable year. I think the one thing you find, if you perform well as a team, and you put in the work, you're going to get guys that um, get recognised, which is great. Um, and to be able to see a lot of boys be able to have career best years was, was great. And um, yeah, it's something we've got to keep pushing each other with. I think for us as a group, it'll really show if we really want it, um, the way we come back and set standards on each other. And I think the beauty is we've learned a lot about how we want to play this year, and it's only expanding on that. There's no more talk about the rise and the rebuild, it's done. The rebuild is over. 
three, four, five, six years, whatever it is with this core group now, this is it. This is us. And we on this side are going to ride the roller coaster of whatever it is they're able to produce. I've seen other teams who feel like they're on the right track, Hutchie, and they don't get back there the following year. So I reckon St Kilda were one who won a final, Caro, uh, didn't get there. Say even way back, the Adelaide Crows win a grand, sorry, make a grand final. What happens that? They haven't been seen since. The Bombers last year. So there's no guarantees. The worst thing that we could possibly do is just assume that the next step will be, um, you know, being a permanent fixture in the finals. Um, no one will give it to you. You have to go out there and earn the right. We have to earn it have to earn it. We need to find a way to continue to want to be more. We have to we have to raise the standard where we sit in that you know seventh to tenth and I said that in my presser afterwards. Um, we're trying to shoot to be better than that. We have to make change, we have to get better. Um, we didn't finish in the finals and um, and when you're there and you're shooting for what we're after change has to exist. It's time to get busy getting better. Let's get to work.